little logistics uh, things. I think we're all set now. Let the record reflect that all we have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Motion for the executive minutes of July 9th, 2012. I move that. Second. We had discussion already. Vote for a vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. A motion for the regular minutes of July 9th, 2012. I move that. Second. Discussion? Um, the uh, a minor change is with uh, the council. I think everyone saw that, and that is a minor change. Yep. Anything else? Uh, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Okay, welcome everyone. Special night here. I'm going to get through a few uh, announcements and then get to the special part of the evening. One of the things that um, really is makes it enjoyable for all of us to be up here when we get to recognize heroic effort over many, many years. Um, uh, just a housekeeping item that the first meeting in November will be the first Monday in November, November 5th, because we have uh, the 12th is the uh, legal holiday for Veterans Day, and we could not move it back in that week, so we'll be meeting a week earlier. Um, a couple of things that happened over the past uh, couple of weeks, we had a, a group of us head off to Trenton to take on, uh, to sit down with a few of our assemblymen and uh, DEP and Green Acres, among other things, and it was a fairly productive day. With Green Acres and DEP, the discussion was around the 49 acres we have had uh, some money held up by Green Acres waiting resolution on DEP issues, and we came up with uh, a very good uh, agreement on how to follow through with that. That will keep most of the 49 acres available in open space and uh, open to many for many to enjoy, and it will release 1.2 million. 1 million 292,000. Right, so almost one. Almost $1.3 million in Green Acres funding that we've had uh, waiting, and there's an additional grant that, uh, pending additional funding, will also uh, be released to us, and all before the rollover of the bond anticipation notes in January. So I want to thank uh, joining me in Trenton for that trip, uh, Carmela, Councilwoman Car Carmela Vitale, who took the initiative to reach out to Assemblyman John McKeon to arrange it, and also Councilman Bob Landrigan. And part two of that trip was to talk with Celeste Riley, an assemblywoman from the third district. She is the sponsor of Assembly Bill A2586. And some of you, or many of you, may have received a postcard in the mail from uh, a group called Protect Our Neighborhoods or something along those lines. I don't think that's may maybe the a proper name for the group, but the reality is this bill would exempt private universities from local zoning approvals. And the idea was to put them on the same standing as public colleges and universities. And actually, this bill would give them more leeway than the local university, than, than the public colleges, because they wouldn't even have to go to the State Department of Education. We have a very good working relationship with Drew University. I think most communities in the state have great working relationships with the universities and part of it is the great town and gown relationships and the, and negotiations and conversations that go through approvals. So we have told the assembly our um, concerns with this along with a host of other towns. We, I would urge you to uh, reach out to the uh, assembly and tell them that this bill is not in the best interest of the state of, the state of New Jersey and there's other ways to address these issues. Um, 
The library is having a town hall meeting introducing the library's strategic plan for the years 2012 through 2015, and that will be Thursday, October 18th, 7.30, a week from this Thursday, and that will be at the Chase Auditorium in the uh, public library. And I'm sure we'll hear more comments about Bottle Hill Day from um, several of our council members, but once again, an incredible Bottle Hill Day, cooperation from Mother Nature, um, I'm not too sure about whether it was record crowds or not, but certainly when you have to, it takes you uh, an hour to get the block because the crowds are so uh, strong. It is a great, great sign. I think uh, the feedback we've gotten from vendors and uh, visitors was very positive. And as I said on Bottle Hill Day, as I announced it several times, and every time she gets upset, but sitting in the front row is our chair of Bottle Hill, Lisa Ellis, and uh, I want to give her a hand for all that. Work. And a minor thank you to the three mascots that probably threw the race so that the mayor could win. But uh, for those that missed it, I think there were some pictures and video, and um, my check is in the mail to keep them from being published. Uh, one last thing before we get uh, down to our uh, two proclamations is um, most people won't re remember what five years ago today was in the town of Madison, October 10th, uh, besides being 2007, but it was Ray Cody Day in Madison. <laughs> And so I want to uh, recognize Ray on the fifth anniversary of Ray Cody Day. It came shortly after when he lost the title acting in front of a uh, borough administrator, and it is great to have you with us still. Thank you. So thank you, Ray. Proclamations, and for the first one, I want to invite uh, Dr. Isaac Sarker up. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bob. Hey, I need my microphone. Right here. There we go. It's live. And it's live. We're, we're improving the technology here. This is a proclamation for National Breast Reconstruction Awareness Day, October 17, 2012. Whereas, since 1998, health plans that offer breast cancer coverage have been required to provide coverage for breast reconstruction and prosthetics. And whereas less than 20% of eligible women with breast cancer undergo breast reconstruction, and published research shows that nearly 70% of women are not informed of their care options. And whereas recent studies determined that the two significant reasons why women did not undergo breast reconstruction were that they were not informed of their options, and they were not referred to a plastic surgeon for breast reconstruction. And whereas October 17, 2012 is National Breast Reconstruction Awareness Day, USA initiative designed to promote education and awareness and access regarding post-mastectomy breast reconstruction. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, proclaim Observance of National Breast Reconstruction Awareness Day, Wednesday, October 17, 2012. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to be involved in providing breast reconstruction for women who require it. And uh, it is very important that women are aware of these options. I think our community is not in that 20% that isn't aware of it. And we are very fortunate to be in that community. So uh, I think this is a national effort that's going on around the country to make all communities aware of these options for women. And uh, I'm proud to be part of it. Thank you. I did forget one more announcement, or two more announcements. Employee of the, for the month of October, Stacy Dooley of the Purchasing Department for a strong work ethic and commitment to compliance with the local public contracting laws. And if anyone knows what that involves, you know why she's being recognized. And an anniversary, Michael Minnie of the Madison Police Department, 25th anniversary on October 17th, 2000, uh, October 27th.
Jerry, come on up. Jeannie, step on up here. I'll hand off to Jeannie first to uh, start off, and Lisa, come on up also. Jerry? How about Bridget? Come on, Bridget up here. Madison has benefited from your 34 years of service, and we are truly grateful. On a very personal note, my family had the pleasure of getting to know you as the school resource officer when we first moved to Madison. If I still remember that many years ago. We were impressed by your overwhelming community-mindedness and your enthusiasm to coach kids to be good citizens. I also witnessed your work and advocacy for Project Community Pride. You firmly believe in our youth and in giving them second chances. You demonstrated the best of community policing in all of your duties. Jerry, you will be truly missed. I congratulate you on your retirement. I also want to thank Bridget for sharing you with Madison and wish you and your family the best in all your future endeavors. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. As Jeannie mentioned, one of Jerry's many roles over the years was school re resource officer, and so I've invited Lisa Ellis on behalf of the Board of Education to present Jerry with a proclamation. Let's just work. No, you have to do anything. Just okay. Talk. Uh, I thank the mayor for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I have known Jerry and, and Bridget for forever. We've been neighbors. Our sons grew up and played baseball together. Um, I've had the benefit of his expertise and guidance and common sense so many times over the years as school board president and just as a citizen. Um, as was mentioned, he served as our first school resource officer. Uh, he's always been a friend to the district. He's helped us with security issues. He's, he's always been there for us. Um, and I'd like to read, uh, I had a, a friend who happens to be a friend of Jerry's too, and who was a professional writer. We sat down and put our thoughts together, and he put the words on paper for me, and I'd like to read that to you. In recognition of his retirement, presented with great appreciation, October 2012, to Jerry Manto, because it was always more than a job to him, because he understood that kids usually need a friend more than a cop, because he was always there for them to trust, because he was available around the clock to kids who needed him, because he saved kids' lives without ever claiming credit, because he defined what a school resource officer should be, because he gave kids a positive view and respect for law enforcement, because he was always Officer Jerry, to so many. He will always be Officer Jerry to us all. And when we remember him, we'll do so with gratitude, with admiration, with nostalgia, and most of all, with a smile. I think before I read this proclamation, and we do have more after that, I just want to uh, say a few words uh, personally. A couple of things I picked up on, first of all, Jeannie talked about 34 years of service. We, we could be honoring someone for 34 years of working for the town, 34 years of coming in every day, but service is what defines Jerry. It truly was service to Madison. And and I, I think that if Jerry didn't set the tone for how to work with the school, the word resource probably should never have been in the title. It could have been just school officer, someone that just went to the school, 
you know, made sure things were safe, um, took the call when things got out of hand. Jerry set the tone for Wayne Reed to follow and Lisa Esposito to follow after Wayne because, as Lisa said, that he was Officer Jerry, or Officer Jerry to the students. He was truly a resource. And it is so important that our youth grow up respecting and knowing that they can work with the police force. And that's what, Jerry, that's exactly what you did. And then there's the other part of Jerry, which some of it will obviously continue. I've been talking about that, his involvement with uh, organizations such as Project Community Pride, something that uh, we know is so important to the youth. We all make mistakes. Lord knows I did as a teenager. It's what you learn from those mistakes, and it's through Jerry's leadership that the um, Project Pride works with those students to get them back on track. And then there's the projects that were taken care of working with the county. SLAP, for those that may not know, the Sheriff's Labor Assistance Program. Jerry was always quick to say when there's you know, out of control uh, weeds or the, the Elks Club needed a major rehab so they could serve the scouts so that the borough, we could clear out part of uh, Hartley Dodge, get ready for projects. Jerry was making that call to the sheriff's office to get slapped down here. So it's just ongoing. I could go on for forever talking about everything that Jerry has done. So it is truly an honor to, be, to recognize you today. So on behalf of the governing body, we have a resolution here. Whereas Jerry Mantone joined the Madison Police Department as a full-time employee in August 1980, after serving three years as a special police officer. And whereas lifelong resident of Madison, Jerry graduated from Madison High School, received an associate's degree from Crim criminal justice Morris from Morris County College, bachelor's degree from of management from Kane College, master's degree in public administration from Fairleigh Dickinson University, and whereas Jerry, a graduate of the Morris County Police Academy, extended his education in law enforcement to attendance at the Police Executive Institute, New Jersey State Association of Chiefs, as well as graduation West Point Leadership and Command class. And whereas he is a certified firearms instructor, certified police academy instructor for the state of New Jersey, verbal judo instructor, certified community policing practitioner, and whereas and was the department's investigative division commander and community policing liaison, and whereas over the course of his long career in the Madison Police Department, Jerry was promoted to sergeant in 1988, to lieutenant in 1991, and to acting police chief in August 2012, and whereas Jerry served as police resource, resource officer for several years at Madison High School where he enjoyed interacting with students, where Jerry Mantone Senior Award is presented to the senior boy and girl who best exemplify the same characteristics towards others as Jerry Mantone has dis displayed while attending Madison High School. And whereas, in the, following the proud family tradition of service to the community, Jerry is the president of the Board of P Project Community Pride, an active member of the Madison Elks, and a current member of the Madison Housing Authority, and a former member on the boards of the Madison Teen Center and the Madison Blue League. Now therefore I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough, borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, wish to express our gratitude and appreciation to Jerry Mantone for his outstanding service to the borough of Madison. We have enjoyed the privilege of working with him and extend our best wishes, wishes for Jerry for his future endeavors. And if I could have Bob and Pamela come up. Bridget, because for 34 years, someone had to be sitting at home taking care of everything while Jerry was doing all these great things. So, thank you. I really didn't intend to speak tonight because I know that um, th this is a big night for everybody. But um, I was sitting there and I was thinking, uh, you know, we've all been talking about Jerry's 34 years, but what I know about Jerry is that, you know, he's a good man. He's a good father. He's a good son. 
And I had the privilege of being his father's running mate when we first went into politics. And one of the things that I learned about um, what source of pride Jerry was, was to his mom and dad. And I, I'm thinking, Jiggs is looking down, saying, this is a very proud moment for the Mantone family. So, wish you a lot of luck. All right, God bless you. God bless you. And the last thing we want to give you in recognition of your leadership to the Madison Police Department is the Chief's pen. Chief Jerry, thank you so much for everything you've done. Does anybody need my resume? <laughs> um, I'd just like to thank um, all my uh, brothers in blue for coming out tonight and all the citizens and friends that are here, and family members, and the mayor and council for um, recognizing me tonight and allowing me to serve Madison uh, in the capacity I did. Um, I had a fantastic time uh, holding on to all the good thoughts, and I uh, hope I made a difference in the borough. And uh, I appreciate everybody's um, thoughts and uh, comments over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, They'll, they'll always stay with me and I won't forget them. And we do have a, a very, very fine police department. Reports from committees, public safety, Ms. Sukumoto. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Do you, you want to wait to let everybody? Yeah, we can uh, hold, hold off while the uh, crowd shuffles out. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Spread the word that as you see Jerry on the street to thank him. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Is this on? So. Can you hear me? It's not on? No. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Um, the Joint Municipal Court continues to receive very positive feedback from all the participating towns and all the users of the court. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Deputy Court Administrator Dawn Ajir for her certification as a Certified Municipal Court Administrator by the New Jersey Municipal Court Administrator Certification Board. As you probably noticed, several wooden poles have been installed by our electric department over at the commuter lot. Additional lighting will soon be installed to improve safety for our commuters. Also, for resident commuters with permits, 20 new first-come, first-served spaces are now available at the Maple Lot directly across from the train station. As reported at the last meeting, the Complete Streets Committee is working with the Sustainable Madison Committee and Trans Options on the Safe Routes to School project. We will have a presentation tonight about the project and also a resolution for the Sampson Avenue project for safe route improvements to Central Avenue School will be discussed later on on the agenda. Also, for the fire department, this week is fire prevention week. The fire department will visit all schools over the next few weeks as well as have classes with Classes visit our fire station to discuss fire safety and prevention. 
Many residents in the past few weeks have asked me many questions about staffing shortage in the police department. As you know, I have been advocating for hiring an additional officer since earlier this year. The governing body approved one additional police officer in the 2012 budget. The police department and the administrators finished the interviewing process for a new officer and also identified a top candidate um, sometime in July. However, the governing body deferred the hiring to the conclusion of the arbitration process. The governing body deferred the hiring again in August due to affordability concerns after reviewing the estimated 2013 financials. With the new labor contract, the new officer's starting salary is now lowered to, to $46,000 with extended steps. Both recent retirees with considerable much higher salaries will be going off the books in 2013. Chief Trevina and Acting Chief Mentone retirements bring the number of sworn officers for the department down to 25. The immediate hiring of an officer is necessary for the police department's day-to-day -day operations and the safety of our residents. I have made the recommendation to the governing body and we expect to have a formal resolution to hire an additional officer at our next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities, Dr. Esposito. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, October seems to be the month for Madison uh, with um, disasters. Uh, today, uh, as you all know or may have known, we lost power to the entire town. Um, the uh, crew was quickly on hand uh, to switch on our um, electrical substations. Uh, the first ones that came on were Kings Road, which took care of that. Um, but unfortunately, the other one would not go on. Um, Jersey Central Power and Light um, was called and they reacted rather quickly this time. Uh, came in and they said that it was one of their uh, relay switches, which was a problem. Uh, so as soon as they fixed that, uh, we switched our substations on a little while uh, and, and took care of that. Um, um, uh, I understand the, uh, you know, the high school was out of, of power uh, during lunchtime. Um, but with due diligence of the, uh, the, of the fire department and the police, uh, they were there to feed the 700 and some odd children um, that uh, needed their lunch during the cafeteria. So uh, kudos to them uh, as well. Um, so we, um, we had the problem fixed. Uh, Jersey Central will be uh, looking at that relay switch to see why um, it wasn't on our radar. Um, and, um, and things have, um, are pretty much back to normal. Uh, and they also continue to do their primary and secondary maintenance as well. Uh, and that's the reason why we, we get our power back as quickly uh, as we can without much of, uh, much of any inconvenience. So thanks uh, to them and everybody who helped uh, today and to take care of the problems that existed through our, uh, uh, through our power outage. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Lynx. Thank you, Mayor Conley. The engineering department reports that we have received a letter promising $134,790 of federal aid for Sampson Avenue sidewalk improvement. Work is expected to begin next spring. PSENG has stated that the Main Street project is roughly three weeks from completion. There was a good turnout for the public review of the proposed road and water main improvements on October 1st. We will be paving Main Street between Seaman Street and Division Avenue on Friday, October 10, 2012, between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. We are continuing improvements to the Treadwell Pump Station and will have an emergency generator there in two weeks. The work on the Madison Recreation Complex and its field house is nearing completion, with gravel, drainage, paving, and striping work finishing up in the next few weeks. The Madison Environmental Commission was instrumental in completing the rain garden at the MRC. The, the Department of Public Works will be starting late pickup on October 22, 2012. Use of three men each will be assigned to the four corners of town. Free leaf bags will be available at the borough garage starting on October 22. 2012 between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. through November 30th, 2012. Thank you. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Catanello. Thank you, Mayor. 
In anticipation of the November 6th general election, the clerk's office will remain open for late night voter registration on October 16th, 2012 until 8 p.m. Applications for vote by mail ballots and voter registration forms are available in the borough clerk's office or online at Morris Elections, M-O-R-R-I-S-E-L-E-C-T-I-O-N-S dot -E -E org. Polls for the general election on November 6th will open at 6 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. sharply. Thank you very much. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Landergan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Madison Chamber of Commerce will hold its biannual fire extinguisher inspections on Tuesday, October 16th from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. The location of the inspections will be at the corner of Central Avenue and Main. Uh, they say look for the signs and the balloons. Uh, the fee for extinguisher tagging is $15. If you go there, chamber members will pay a discounted rate of $10. Uh, a substantial savings from the $85 on-site inspection charge. Uh, this program is open to all Madison businesses and residences. Uh, new and refurbished extinguishers will be available for purchase at a discounted price. Um, secondly, I would like to thank, in addition to Lisa, all the work that you did at DEED for uh, Battle Hill Day. I'd also like to thank the Downtown Development Commission and all those other groups that took part in it. It was a tremendous success. Uh, I know I had some, my in-laws came into town that day and they said it was bigger than ever. And they really had a good time there. So thank you, Lisa, and thank you to all the others. Uh, a reminder that the farmer's market is in front of the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts right now. There's only a few weeks left. Um, feel free to give myself or the DDC a call uh, regarding the new location. Uh, it looks like it's working well. Um, we'd like your feedback. And finally, um, this Friday at 8.30, the local emergency planning committee will be meeting. Now, as you know, we had two significant storms within the past year, and this committee is made up of department heads. Darren Datchetson and I uh, will be chairing the committee, and we will also have Jersey Central Power and Electric there. So we're going to call them to task as far as what's going on and what to expect for them in the future. Um, I will be talking to Jake and the press afterwards to let them know exactly what was discussed, because so I think the residents need to know uh, what the town is doing for them in such circumstances. Thank you, Mayor. Health and Public Assistance, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I announced that uh, we had a new health officer start on September 24th, and uh, I have a very nice um, uh, report from her. She's been very busy. Um, in addition to becoming familiar with the staff and having meetings um, with uh, all the administration, as well as attending Chatham Township Board of Health meetings, um, she also attended a presentation with uh, the Madison Board of Health representatives and staff to Springfield. And uh, discussions are ongoing at this point. In fact, um, there, we have a couple of people down there uh, tonight listening to that presentation. Uh, she also wants to note that the flu clinics, don't forget, began on October 3rd and will continue to October 27th for uh, all the contract towns as well as Madison. So uh, get down and have your flu shot. Um, as far as our environmental, uh, our sanitarian, Tamika Trotman, participated as an inspector in Bottle Hill Day. It's very important that with so many uh, vendors uh, giving food that we have a good, safe day, and obviously it was. Additionally, she spent most of today, October 10th, with the various restaurants and the food establishments throughout the town to make sure that the power outages um, did not create any problems for uh, proper food handling procedures. So, um, you know, th this is just one of the uh, great things that happens with our, our health department. Um, we have some news from the Health Education and Municipal Alliance, um, uh, Christine Chesler. There's lots of events going on. Uh, MASA really has a great uh, website if you want to go on and take a look at it. But there's great um, products there for, um, for kids and their parents. The first one is called Misrepresentation, October 24th and November 28th. 
on, um, there's also Take Control of Your Health, which is Tuesdays, October 30th, November 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. And this is a great one. I, I've seen the, um, the flyer on this. This is Parenting with Calm and Control. So if anybody wants to know how to calmly control your kids. <laughs> yeah, mine, it's too late for me to. Now we have grandchildren, we could do that too. That's November 13th and 14th, so um, I'm actually looking forward to that myself because it's, uh, it's a, good, a great speaker. That's all, Mayor. Thank you very much. Communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Mayor and Council received three. An email received September the 25th from Paul Cerno of Sampson Road regarding sidewalk, reconstru or sidewalk construction on Sampson. Um, an email received September the 28th from Wilma Vanderpoel of South Orange requesting the Council's support in um, efforts to reject the assembly bill that you mentioned previously um, regarding private and public colleges before land use agencies. And an email received October 3rd from Christine Mullen of Central Avenue regarding traffic safety at the intersection of Fairview and Central Avenues. Thank you. Mayor, I move resolution 247-2012, which needs to be read into the record. Matt, do you have a... I second it. Do you have a copy of that, right? Yeah, it's in your packet. It's, it's at the end of your book. What's that? And it's posted. It's at the end of your book. Oh, at the end, okay. Sorry. No problem. Go ahead. Resolution 247-2012, it's a resolution of the Borough of Madison ratifying appointment of Lieutenant Darren Dasherson to the position of Acting Chief effective October 5th, 2012. Whereas Acting Police Chief Jerry Mentone by, by letter dated September 24th, 2012 notified the Borough of his intentions to retire effective October 5th, 2012 after 34 years of service with his terminal leave to commence immediately and ending on August 2nd, 2013. And whereas the borough hereby accepts Acting Chief Montone's retirement and in reliance thereon is hereby appointing Lieutenant Darren Dasherson as Acting Police Chief. Now th therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Borough of Madison and the County of Morris in the state of New Jersey that Lieutenant Darren Dasherson is hereby appointed to the position of Acting Chief effective October 10th, 2012 be it further resolved that the permanent appointment of police chief will be determined through a formal promotional process adopted by ordinance hereafter. We have a motion and a second on that. Discussion? Roll we'll call a vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh, Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Acting Chief, thank you for taking the leadership. Now moving on to the invitation for discussion, round one of two, and this is when it's limited to our agenda discussions and also resolutions that are listed. Um, ordinances that are up for hearing will obviously have their own opportunity to uh, comment on, but in case anyone is here to comment on the ordinance 29-2012, which is the peddler's ordinance. We have pulled that, we're revising it, and there are substantial revisions, and so it will be reintroduced at our next meeting, so there will not be a hearing for that one. So as a reminder, in case you haven't seen the agenda, on the agenda, discussions, safe routes to schools, $9,000 for pole-mounted speed monitors, $3,000 from general capital for improvement of two dispatcher, purchase of two dispatcher chairs, uh, $2,000 for crime scene camera appropriation, uh, rescinding another agenda item, rescinding ordinance 3-90, which is parking fees for private recreational vehicles at public works, 
And last agenda item is state health benefits programs. Plus, you may also comment on any resolution that is listed. For those guidelines, if you have something to comment, if you step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Is anyone wishing to comment? Sam. Uh, Sam Cercio, Park Avenue, Madison. Uh, I'd like to touch on resolution 246. Is that the tank that uh, was supposed to be removed around five, six years ago? But what, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that, you know, we got to learn from our past. Uh, when I was on the council, that's when I, one of my suggestions was you should start a construction committee. To my understanding that, uh, in other words, we just renovated this, this beautiful building, and now we got to take out a tank that should have been taken out, and the state said we should have taken it out several years ago. And to my understanding, if I remember, that uh, we told them that we'd take it out when the renovation was going on. And they, they said it would be okay. And at that time, it would have cost half this price. And the thing is, I just hope we learn from these mistakes. That tank should have been taken out when the place was renovated. Now we got to do a mess again. And again, like I said, I hope we learn from our mistakes. We're learning every day, I can guarantee you that. Uh, Ray, do you want to comment? Maybe I could clarify. The, no, no, I'm not going to get into a response back and forth. Just, just, uh, just clarification. I mean, the original, this, this issue goes back a number of years when the original plan for the reconstruction of this building was contemplated and the discussion, Sam is correct, but that was 10 years ago. The discussion was with the EP was it's to the rear of the building and at the time we were not handicap accessible. So the request to the EP was they agreed to was that when you, and at the time they were going to contemplate putting the elevator on the rear of the building, not to not to go through the core of the building. So DEP said that was an acceptable remedy that during the construction, if you put an elevator on the back of the building, you can take out the tank at that time. Then the plan changed over time, administrations changed, architects changed, one died, was replaced. The, the new architect had a different vision to put the elevator where it is now. The plan to the rear was abandoned. We notified DEP. They said, okay, the next step is then, okay, when are you going to take the tank out if you're not going to put the elevator there? That's the purpose of this action. So it wasn't a mistake. It was a plan. The plan changed with administrations, and we got a better elevator, and we got a, a less expensive plan now. So. Yeah, but I, I, I think I probably covered, yeah. Anyone else wish to comment anything on the discussion agenda or resolutions listed? Seeing none, I close this part of the agenda, agenda and move on to our agen agenda discussions. Safe Roots School. Jeannie? Yep. <coughs> um, this agenda item is about presentation for Safe Routes to School. Um, the Complete Streets Committee's um, goal is to improve our residents' quality of life by making it safe and easy to cross streets, walk and bicycle to and from school, work, shops, and train station and the committee fully supports and is working with the Sustainable Madison Committee on Safe Routes to School Project. And today, with us this, this evening, we have Heather Shepherd of um, Sustainable Madison Committee um, to give us a five-minute presentation. Thank you for being here. Sure. Thank you, Heather. Good evening, Mayor and, and Council Members. Um, I'm Heather Shepherd. I've been a member of the Sustainability Committee since May. And um, I just wanted to introduce the Safe Routes to School initiative tonight and take a few minutes to uh, talk about it. So Safe Routes to School is a federal, state, and local effort to enable and encourage children and, and children with disabilities to walk and bicycle to school and to make sure that they can do that in a very safe and appealing way. Um, it's one of the programs that the Sustainable Madison Committee has prioritized, and we're undertaking that as part of our Sustainable Jersey certification. Um, we're working in partnership with the Complete Streets Subcommittee, Traffic Safety, and the Board of Education. So it's definitely a, a, a cross-functional effort. Um, pr we, providing sa safe routes to school is going to play an important role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution, reducing idling, and creating a healthier and safer community and hopefully a lot less congestion, especially around the schools. Um, this topic, safe routes to school and increased walking and biking in Madison, was actually identified as one of the top priorities 
by Madison residents that we surveyed at Bottle Hill Day. If you happen to stop by our booth, we had a survey and we have 95 responses so far and they're still coming in. Betsy Ullman has uh, those results which she can share. And, and basically we wanted to find out which sustainable actions Madison could undertake that, that were the highest priorities for um, residents. So as part of this effort as we move forward, we're gonna be working with an organization called Trans Options. Um, they're a local transportation planning organization. They're funded by the state, which means that they're a free resource to Madison, which is terrific. They've worked with a lot of other local communities around us, including Chatham, and they do things like help promote walk to school days, establishing a set day every month, developing green education curriculum around bike safety and walking and anti-idling. They have walking school buses where parents take turns uh, acting as a chaperone and walking children to school. Um, and these have been very successfully in implemented in other communities. Also in this role, they work with town planners and engineers to develop walking and biking maps. They survey students at schools and they can help figure out which capital improvements need to be made so that we can make walking uh, and biking safer for students and for everyone. So some of the next steps that we're undertaking, um, Trans Options has sent out a couple forms to the town, I believe, uh, to Bob Vogel or through Bob Vogel. So the first thing is a friendship form. And this is uh, basically just a letter of support from the town and local businesses, the YMCA organizations, just stating that you're in support of Safe Routes to School and its mission. Um, on Walk to School Days, we'd be asking for your support um, in that effort. Um, the second item, we have a non-binding model resolution of support that we'd like the town and the school board to sign, and that just supports what New Jersey is trying to do for the safe routes to school and uh, continuing to develop uh, better ways to walk and bike. Um, Joe Weiss from Trans Options, who's going to be working with me on this project, um, he'll be making a presentation at the uh, October 16th school board meeting. And then after that, what we'd like to do is get a meeting together with traffic safety, town officials, uh, sustainable Madison and the school board and figure out a plan for Madison and we'd be happy to come back at another date and share those details but at this stage we've really just sort of introduced the program and the benefits and we've got all the important partners uh, I think really excited and, and working together on this. Thank you Heather. Okay. Comments? I'll, I'll okay. throw in my comments just okay. that you know this is a great program and um, I'm glad we have the leadership behind it. Not only is it the, the greenhouse effects and everything else as far as getting the cars off the road. It, it is changing lifelong habits for our uh, children. You know, the, what is uh, with childhood obesity, the fact right now, if things don't change, the current generation of children will have a shorter life expectancy of their, of their parents. And that's the first time that's ever happened in history. And that is scary. And I just look at the fact that as people see me ride my bicycle to work, on sunny days and things like that. That's not a habit I started five, ten years ago. That's a habit I started when I was in school. And I think if we can reestablish that in our children, it will pay dividends for many years to come. So thank you for your work. Thank you, Chair. More to come. Uh, appropriate $9,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of two pole-mounted speed monitor devices. This, is, this was listed in the capital budget for the year. Great. Maybe I could take the next three. They're all involving the police department. These were all approved items in the 2012 capital budget that the governing body consented to authorize funding for, and this is the request to actually appropriate the funds. be $9,000 for two pole-mounted speed monitors. The goal would be working with the liaisons and the... Uh, traffic sergeant to establish these, to supplement our existing supply and to position these at Ridgedale and Park to suggest that to the police as appropriate locations to start some traffic enforcement on Ridgedale and Park. The second item is a $3,000 item for two dispatcher chairs. These are specialized chairs. They're used 24 hours a day. Um, they're not folding chairs, so that's why it, it seems unusual that you spend $3,000 on two chairs, but these are customized chairs for the dispatchers. And the third item is $2,000 for a special crime scene camera, which would be used by the Detective Bureau. Our existing camera is 10 years old, and it's not functional, not up to date on technology. And again, this was authorized in the capital budget. And all three items were discussed and requested by the police department and have the support of both acting chiefs. And these are ordinances 33, 34, and 35 listed. <laughs> Excuse me, water going down the wrong way. Uh, Jeannie? Yeah. Um, uh, 
Regarding the first item for the purchase of the two pole mounted speed monitor devices, Sergeant Kimmer and I have been discussing the need for these for at least a year. Um, as you know, our, um, our current system, the, the current speed monitor is a very big, bulky um, item that we have to drag around town uh, from places to places. And particularly if you look at Reachdale Avenue, where we have the speed monitor there for quite some time, that it's a, it's a, very, it's a real challenging thing for us to place our current one over there on Ridgedale because of the narrow width of the street. Um, the, uh, if you look at the cost on the second page for uh, the council members, um, we originally thought that the cost would be cheaper, but however, we have selected this one with the, um, the solar panel. So this way, I think in the long term, it's more cost effective that we don't have to keep on um, using manpower to recharge the system um, every two or three days, which is a real hassle for us currently. Um, so, and um, I, I think really alluded to the fact that we initially will be using these two. Um, did you say? Ridgedale and Park. For Ridgedale and, and Park, Park which is really desperately needed um, around the high school and also um, for all the traffic along Park Avenue. Um, so, certainly recommend that. And um, regarding the, um, the dis dispatch chairs, um, the current one, we've been using the current one for eight years already. Um, yes, they seem pretty costly for a couple of chairs, but like Ray said, that, um, that these are being used uh, 20 by 7, 365 days a, a, a day, all, at all times. So um, these are specialized chairs. The current chairs have been re repaired many, many times and parts replaced, so it's time for, um, for change. And w with this, w it also comes with, um, with a very um, um, long warranty period. So that's, uh, that's for this one. And uh, let's see if that has... Yeah, and also for the crime scene cameras, it's absolutely a necessary upgrade for documentation and processing of crime scene. So um, it's, a, it's a necessity. Any other comments or questions? Okay, again, these ordinances are listed for introduction. The uh, next discussion item, rescind ordinance 3-90, parking fees for private recreational vehicles stored at the public works yard. Um, this is a request from DPW and our insurance carrier. Right now, by ordinance, we allow any resident with a recreational vehicle, which have a significant value, to pay $115 a year and store their vehicle for the entire year at the public works garage. So besides the potential liability issue, which is why the carrier is involved, the DPW issue is just space. So we have forty to sixty thousand dollar RVs in a, I wouldn't say an unsecured lot, a, a fenced in lot, but without the detail and the return to the borough is one hundred fifteen dollars to assume that risk. So our carrier is suggesting that this ordinance which has been on the books for quite a number of years, perhaps had seen its day, and what we're suggesting is by introducing it tonight, we would rescind it, but we would honor all outstanding commitments through March, uh, which is the current cycle through March of twenty thirteen, and give. These individuals notice now, we currently have two vehicles there and we have one pending um, that they have to find another place to store these vehicles because we don't think it's appropriate to store private property on a public location, especially when our carrier is telling them these are uh, large risk items for us for a very nominal return. It's a nice convenience for the residents, but it's a risk probably that we should not be taking. Any uh, comments or questions? Jenny? How many of these do we have? We have two currently, and there's one that filed the, the appropriate paperwork, and it's uh, some don't stay all year. I mean, it's broken up into two, two sections of the year. The longer period is $75. The later period is $40. So the current period that's now underway will carry us through March. It's just we don't have the space, it, it, but it's more the insurance liability is our concern. So this is a typical year with three, so it's been like three to five? Or well, it's, uh, this is high for us, and I think that's what probably put the squeeze on to have three so down there at one time. And it's, um, Our carrier is saying we shouldn't have any. I mean, obviously, you could, if you want an alternate, you could put a number of cap, but then you've got to pick between who's first. It's, I, I think it's an issue we just want to avoid having the liability of a very expensive vehicle that's under our 
stewardship, uh, and we're not watching it on the weekends. And if somebody jumps the fence and damages that, we're going to get a claim. And for $115, it doesn't seem the risk reward is not there. Do do the uh, users actually need any help from us no. with transition? They, they oh, you mean in terms of finding a space? Yeah. Uh, they're going to need, well, I don't know where, yes. I mean, I, I don't know what we could offer. I mean, we, we would have to find replacement public property elsewhere. We really don't have public property. We don't want to take the risk that's right. anywhere on our property. So it's, yeah. uh, Most likely, I, I would assume there are commercial establishments that would help them store it, but that's, I don't know. Don't yeah. know. Any other comments? Okay, again, that is, uh, Ordinance 32, 2012, which is listed for introduction. State health benefits programs. Uh, this is a requirement of the state. We All our employees, our full-time employees, are currently enrolled in the state health benefit program. Once a year, the state opens those plans up for what's called the open enrollment. That started on October 1st, and it runs until November 9th. During that period of time, our employees have the option to select if they want to remain with the current plan under the state health benefits or move to one of the other plans. By state law, we're... The governing body is required to pass a resolution. We're required by state law to offer a minimum of four programs, two of which have to be high deductible. We meet that requirement by this resolution. In addition, we've added one additional plan because a number of our employees uh, participate with Summit Medical Group over in Berkeley Heights. And our, the four plans that we currently provide, the Summit, that's an out-of-network visit. So in surveys of the employees, they indicated um, a preference that if we could add an additional carrier that would bring them under the umbrella of Summit Medical Group, that that would be uh, desirable to them. So we have two informational sessions with the employees, and for a new wrinkle this year, we've invited the spouses, because we think in many cases the, 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 uh, the wife handles the medical issues for the family, and the husbands go home and don't really bring the information. So we've invited all the spouses of uh, all our employees to attend along with their husbands at this presentation. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But we need to adopt a resolution designating these five plans or these carriers within the state health benefit plan. Questions or comments? Um, are the costs to us the same? The costs are the same, basically, yeah. And I mean, the costs will be different to the, I mean, if attached, oh, it's not there. Yes, I mean, there's very nominal differential between, the, the difference is on if the employees select the high deductible plans, the cost to us is less and the cost to the employee is less. And that's one of the incentives is by providing the menu of options that if employees want to take, we have one high deductible plan, which is a 2,000 and we also have one for 4,000, that if an employee wants to take that, the premium to the borough will be less and the employee contribution will, will be less, but we can't mandate them to take the high definition or the high deductible plan, they have the option. Matt, did you want to? That's it? correct. And, and the um, 11 um, becomes effective in phases in over a four year period. And as the phasing goes in, based on income levels, uh, employees who make $90,000 or $95,000 or more will be paying 35% of the cost of their benefits. So the state has now come up with various options to let employees make that decision um, in order to, you know, affect their contribution, um, and they have the ability now to lower it with a high deductible plan. Right. This just gives options to the employees as the financial impact is hitting in, and we'll, we are going to the third year of that four-year plan on July 1st, 2013. So employees are starting to see a greater deduction, and they want options. This is will help us hopefully save us money and save the employees money if they choose the higher deductible option, but we can't require them to do it. We have to offer them as a menu. They pick what they want to pay. Is there a... FSA option for, for people that do a high deductible to uh, do a pre-tax? Yes, uh, all of our plans are set up as a section 125. So all the, all the payments are, not, are um, non-taxable, the, all the deductions out of the employee's paychecks. And also we have a, Brown & Brown has set up a TSA a, a, a service provider for that type of program where people can bank um, their, their health needs and draw against that and, and get a distribution at the end of the year if they don't use it. We've also started to promote more heavily the uh, if you have dual coverage, if the husband and spouse, you know, husband and wife have both both have health insurance coverages, we have a buyout provision that we're allowed by state law. So far, we have seven employees have opted out. That has saved us in excess of uh, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. By we pay the employee who opts out five thousand dollars a year, but we save the, the you know the twenty five thousand dollar premium for the double coverage, um, and the employees are protected that if there's a catastrophic event or a death or 
um, they have the right to return to the system in the following year if there's some loss of coverage by the other spouse. So it's. So did I hear you say that the FSA account can be used? Five plan, the HSAs, et cetera, is okay. part of the state law so that employees now have that flexibility. Okay. So one right. thing, if they don't, at least the way my FSA works. Correct. So and they've, they've changed the, the IRS has changed the limits to $2,500 $2, on it. Um, the IRS didn't change it, my friend. Right. Affordable health care act. Exactly. So you have, you have that. Um, I don't know if, you know, employees, I think you'll see more participation probably in the third and fourth oh, year. Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually yeah. out. And a, and a lot of eyeglasses and other things born in, bought in the last month to uh, draw <laughs> down their account. <laughs> yeah. And, and who is administering the FSA program for us? Well, Br Brown and Brown is providing assistance. The one that we talked about. Yeah, okay. Michelle Kent, but she, they, there's a third party provider through Brown and Brown. Okay. Okay, this is resolution 244 2012. Okay. Ordinances for hearing. Ordinances scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on first reading of the regular meeting of the council held on Monday, September the 24th, 2012. All were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting scene. I call up ordinances for second reading and ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 30, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $40,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for improvement upgrades to Police Department Mobile Vision System. I open the hearing. Is anyone in the audience wish, wishing to comment on Ordinance 30, 30, 2012? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 30, 2012. I'll second. Discussion? See none. Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. No. Mr. Catalanello. Yes. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. I declare Ordinance 30-2012 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper mm. and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 31-2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $25,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for signal improvements. I open the hearing for Ordinance 30, 2012. Seeing no one, I close the hearing. I move for Second. Discussion? Doc? These uh, signals, um, um, are there specific locations or are all the ones that we have left to be, be taken care of? The, the ordinance talks about various locations, but I think at the last meeting there was a question that it was Greenwood and Fairview. Fairview. Was that the? I think that's that's the primary location that would be the primary flasher address. And if there's additional funds available, they would do smaller throughout, with no specified location at the moment. Yeah. So the priority would be Greenwood and Fairview, which relates to Mrs. Mullins' article about almost being hit by a car as she was walking her dog under communications. That's that's a site. Just want to mention that this uh, this is one of the location, the trouble location that the Complete Streets Committee also talked about that we need safety improvement. Okay. Great. Uh, we'll call a vote. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Uh, Mr. Catalanello. Yes. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. I declare Ordinance 31-2012 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we move on to invitation for discussion, round two. This is when you get to comment on anything, not restricted to things on the agenda. Same rules apply as far as stating your name, your address, and keeping your comments to three minutes or less. Is there anyone wishing to comment? Greenwood Avenue. The uh, corner of Greenwood and um, Rosedale, when they built the bridge for Route 24, they built a fence. Um, it's directly diagonally across from Cold Park. And they put the fence right close to the sidewalk. Okay? Since that time, uh, Vegetation has grown on the opposite side of the fence, which is, I assume, state property, since it's a state highway. And you cannot have visibility around the corner 
even if you're standing on the corner to cross the street and you look to your left to see what's coming on Rosedale, you can't see it. Because if I, if I you next time in your neighborhood, you stand there and look down Rosedale to see if there's any traffic coming, you cannot see the traffic coming because the fence has a curve in it and the vegetation's on the other side. Um, if you want to promote safety, I think if that fence was moved back, maybe there's plenty of room there. That it could be moved back 20 feet or more. Um, grass planted, and then there would be a, a nice safe corner there, plenty of visibility. There's been a lot of accidents on that corner. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, mention was um, I think the appropriation for the uh, the chair, the chairs for the police. I think um, it's a very uh, wise decision because if any policeman develops a back problem from sitting in an insufficient chair, I think the cost of medical would be way higher than two thousand um, dollars. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the RV store. I don't know anyone who has an RV. I don't have an RV. However, this whole thing just doesn't ring true to me. A, there's plenty of room down there to store a couple of vehicles. I've been in the borough area numerous times, starting way back when I was young and when they used to, used to bring our newspapers there to recycle. Okay? There's tons of room down there. B, how much reduction is the insurance company going to give us on our rates if we cancel that perk to our residents? Probably not. Um, you would force these residents who cannot store the RVs in the driveways to compete with all the businesses in this area because space uh, is, is a very tight around here. You're, they're going to be competing with plumbers, electricians, landscapers, all these people are looking for places to store their vehicles. Okay? It's not so easy. It's going to be very expensive for these people to store these RVs. Um, I would uh, possibly ask the insurance people to look into the fact, don't these people have insurance on the RVs themselves? Um, in, in addition to that, um, I think the only thing the insurance company is looking out for is their own bottom line. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, this is a, a, a town and, and we need to um, take care of our residents first. Okay, so our two takeaways, one, we will uh, work with Bob Vogel to work with DOT as far as the vegetation, minimally get the ve vegetation cut back, ideally vegetation cut back and fence moved back would be you the... still won't have visibility okay. because um, I, I remember when the highway was built, because I lived about five houses away from there. I had young children and I had, I had a dog, so I always walking in that area. Even if there's no vegetation, you still can't see because the fence is a chain link fence, and you're looking sort of, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. Okay. You're looking at a chain link fence, but not through it. You're looking at the side of the chain link okay. fence. It, All right. From the minute they put that fence up, there wasn't any visibility. Okay. So uh, they were mentioning the corner there, and I, 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 something that's been on my mind for years. Yeah. And uh, I just thought it would be an appropriate time. To and we will also take into consideration the comments related to the RV uh, rental. We've just introduced the ordinance, but as far as before we uh, pass on a final hearing, as far as it, is, is it a hardship on the uh, Residents and what is our actual exposure? You're right. We won't get a discount on the insurance But the thing is once they tell you it's you know when you have a claim That's when it really costs you so well, I think maybe the residents could have their own insurance Yeah, the they do yeah. And, and, and the moving the fence I think would be the best way to yeah. really, uh, All right. improve the corner yeah. and <laughs> Sorry, I think we, we, we'll, oh, we're good. Your three minutes are up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've got it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? It's Mr. Sippers. Uh, Sam Sircio, Park Avenue. Uh, just a couple of uh, suggestions. I'll take one at a time. Or 
You want me to tell it who's, you know. Well, first of all, you know, it was in the Marshtown record today that uh, Marsh Township is putting up uh, 234 townhouses up there in the Columbian Park. Um, I don't know if we could do anything, but we're getting dumped down. We're getting dumped down with the Palm Park doing that 40, uh, that uh, jets and all that stuff. Like I said, I've been on Park Avenue all my life. I used to be able to plot on my driveway. I don't even look an eye. Wait six, seven minutes sometime on a Friday. And now they're going to do these 234 townhouses, and it says right in the paper it's going to dump on us, Park Avenue. And you got where the jets are. They're not even half they're done what they're going to do over there. I mean, my suggestion is, could we, when I say we, the presence of the town of Madison as the mayor council, sent a letter? Because one of the persons that voted no against this said, can't they cut the, the townhouses to 135? And they voted against it. But maybe a letter from the mayor council. That's a suggestion. Because like I said, we're going to kill this back. And it's getting worse and worse. That's at the last meeting. He did a resolution at the last meeting. The second thing is, uh, uh, Mr. Lanigan, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you some input about the farmer's market. And does the, I've talked to dozens and dozens of people for the last two or three years. I brought this up last year and the year before. They all wish you would go back to the Rosedale or the pool is or the high school for park and all that stuff. If you don't want to do that, put, leave it on Waverly Place because, again, traffic. Last Thursday, around 5.30, matter of fact, I was going to get some Chinese food. And uh, you're familiar with Park Avenue, Elm Street. I stopped at Elm Street at 5.30. The light changed three times for me to get to the, to the light near CJ's. When I got at the light of CJ's, traffic was backed up to Drew. Because where they have it now, where the, the, on Green Village Road, they cut off the right-hand turn. Okay, and then when I got through town and I talked to a lot of people from St. Vincent, they pick up their kids 5, 5, 30. They couldn't, it took the same thing to get out of Green Village Road because they couldn't go straight. So the suggestion is, number one, bring it back to the old way that I talk to a lot of people. And again, it don't make any sense because somebody buying these old time and the senior citizens buy a dozen tomatoes or a dozen corn, they're not going to go around shopping. And the parking is bad because the people that work for these vendors, they park their cars there. So, that would be the first suggestion, is bring it back to the old way. Second is don't bring it on Green Hill Road. If you got to leave it in town, leave it on, on Waverly. But uh, most people that I talk to want it back to the old days. That would be my suggestion. All right. Thank you, Sam. I'll give oh, that to the DDC. Take that back to the... Yep. And uh, comments on the, the Honeywell development, um, it was approved by the, um, the, the zone change by the Morris Township Committee I did attend the meeting that was put together by uh, Mayor Peter Mancuso of uh, Mars Township, including the neighboring towns. One of the key things for this development is a major improvement with the uh, Columbia Turnpike uh, intersection and the concept there, which was presented to uh, uh, Department of Transportation Commissioner uh, Simpson, is a flyover. So when you're going east on 24, and you know how you come off onto Columbia Turnpike. If you want to head into Madison, you have to fly across three lanes of traffic uh, almost blindly as the cars are coming up uh, Columbia Turnpike. So the flyover would go up over Columbia Turnpike and where currently is a um, office building, uh, Emilcott, I believe it was the Red Oak Bank at one time. It would go there and provide a direct access into Honeywell. It would also provide uh, direct access instead of if you want to get onto 24 East, and right now as you come off Park Avenue, you get to Columbia Turnpike, go down and ramp, you'd have a direct access. So hopefully those, those improvements timed with the development of the housing will provide the easy in, easy out for that development. Yeah, because you're right, uh, Park Avenue, one of the great things is people love to be in this area. One of the bad things is people love to be in this area and we have to deal with the development. So we'll, we'll, we're working on uh, traffic improvements. And we will certainly keep an eye on Mars Township's developments. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and move on to introduction of ordinances.
ordinance is scheduled for first reading have a hearing date set for November 5th, 2012. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read or set ordinances by title. Ordinance 32, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, rescinding <clears throat> Ordinance 3-90 and 5-91. Amending Chapter 134 entitled Parking Lots of the Borough Code to provide for parking fees for recreational vehicles. Motion. I move. Uh, 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 uh. Second. In discussion, this is the one that just uh, Mr. Zipper commented on. Um, certainly, if we want to keep it moving forward, we can move it forward and then have further discussion. Doc? Is there an ordinance or regulation that um, they can't keep? Uh, yeah, zone. Well, there's a zoning issue, and then also on the street, there's obviously we don't have, allow overnight parking. So yes, it would, would potentially could be a hardship to, for three individuals. I think it's important to find out what, uh, why we'd be liable if someone broke into, you know, I mean, are we liable if someone if someone's car gets broken into on the street? No. I mean, I mean, we do require them to have insurance. There's a hold harmless. Our carrier is just saying, if something happens to us, a forty or sixty thousand dollar vehicle, they're going to look to us. We're going to get dragged into it. It's just it's on our property. We should have had the fence repaired, or should have had a camera on the on the. Can we have them sign a waiver? We do have them sign a waiver, but basically, Still with you know, the waiver, the carrier is saying that we're going to get dragged in. I mean, wa waivers tend to reduce settlements. They don't eliminate it, and obviously. <laughs> It, they never eliminate the fact that you may get dragged in as people want to. Would it pay possibly, and I don't know, to name us as additionally insured on their policy? That, that's a possibility. Yeah. What we can do is if you if you introduce the ordinance, it doesn't mean you have to pass it. Okay. You know, if at the next meeting the, the governing body decides to not vote on it, an ordinance can just die. Uh, we can look into that. I think we should, it's through the, what, the Morris County GIF? Right. We can speak to the Morris County GIF. I can speak to uh, you know, their uh, their legal counsel and find out if there's a way of you know having them named as, as us as an additional insured and making sure that they have appropriate liability co coverage for it. But I think th the one thing with the hold harmless, even if you sign it, you can't give away your right to sue in the future. Um, so you know there's there's only so much you can do to protect yourself, and this is happening in a lot of places. I mean I have situations right now with playgrounds and the removal of certain playground equipment in towns because the carrier says they're too dangerous. So, so what, uh, I would recommend that we, the council's comfortable that we go ahead and... Is there an urgency for this? I guess that's really... Sorry. Is there an urgency for this? Um, it just eventually we're, we're starting, we're, we do have enough meetings uh, yeah, if we it gets pu pushed wait, back, but yeah. I, I think even if we in introduce it as... Uh, that's so we can pull it back. We can uh, do our homework and mm -hmm. let, let, let it die at the next meeting. Or if we find that it's, uh, we're still exposed and we, we want to get out of the business, we can keep it moving forward. You know, I, I think we want to get it done in 2012 so people can make plans on it, uh, but it's not going to affect anyone this year anyway. Roll call a vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes, with the condition that we're going to come back with yeah. more answers. Uh, with, with, uh, with, um, <laughs> I think that's how well, we all feel, right? Yeah, we're, since we're voting, we should only be um, voting, but uh, we'll make sure not only because once, once we get into hearing, it's the comments from the audience first, we'll make sure it's on the work agenda that we have a presentation on the, um, on all the, the findings liability, first. The, mm -hmm. the space issue, and all that, so we have a, can make an educated vote. So now we'll go back to the vote. Okay. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ordinance 33, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, appropriating $9,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of two pole mounted speed monitor devices. Mayor, I move Ordinance 33 2012. I'll second. Further discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh. Mr. Catalanello? 
Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ordinance 34, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $3,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for purchase of two dispatch chairs. Mayor, I move Ordinance 34 2012. I'll second. Discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ordinance 35, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $2,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of one crime scene camera. I move Ordinance 35, 2012. I'll second. Further discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. I move consent agenda resolutions R239 through R246-2012. Second. Discussion? Just for everyone in the audience, that R240 is the resolution reappointing Elizabeth Osborne to the position of borough clerk, and we are looking forward to her staying with us and for many years to come. So thank you. Her husband's here. Yes, I. Okay. Any further discussion? That I've made her turn red. <laughs> Vote, please. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. We have no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers? Okay. Public safety, $51,355.92. Health and public assistance, $5,468.93. Public Works and Engineering, $222,236.71. Community Affairs, $5,390.54. Finance and Borough Clerk, $3,599.100. $3,599.100. $3,599.100. And utilities, $524,288.36. Grand total is four million four hundred and seven thousand eight hundred and fifty two dollars and seventy seven cents. Mayor, I move the vouchers for approval. Second. Discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh, Mr. Catalanella? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. We have no new business. Come on, set four. Finished? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Right. He's going to ask you a question. Yeah. Right. Did he tell you, Mike, what here? Lisa, how are you?